going on, Habibis? Good evening. Hope you all are having a good night. As always, I'm Siraj Hashmi. How we doing? I'm going to play this at quarter speed just to really soothe your Soothe your ears. so bad but it's so good <laughs> okay let's play at normal speed let me inform you got the vaccine. vaccine you got the vaccine they got the vaccine we got the vaccine we can get back to normal let me inform you let's all get the vaccine it's about community immunity i'm talking unity for you and me if Doc says it's good, it trust me, it's good. Now let's all get the vaccine. I'm gonna rock, there is none higher. DMC, I will inspire. Time for us to trust and not debate. The vaccine, believe it's safe to take. Nine out of ten people won't get sick. That's 90% effective and legit. This COVID thing is real, and it will find you. It's killing our people, let me remind you. Back in the days, back in the days, there was polio, smallpox, back in the days. Measles and mumps, man, back in the days. But because of the vaccines, none of those days. Vaccines, they work to trigger immunity. Two shots, we got antibody security. We gotta act now. No need to wait. Get the vaccine before it's too late, for real. Actually, that was pretty good at uh, twice the speed. Let's do it one more time, shall we? We got the vaccine, we got the vaccine, they got the vaccine, we got the vaccine. We can get back to normal, let me inform you, let's all get the vaccine. It's about community immunity. I'm talking unity for you and me. If Doc says it's good, then trust me, it's good, now let's all get the vaccine. There is none higher, DMC, I will inspire. Time for us to trust and not debate. The vaccine, believe it's safe to take. Nine out of ten people won't get sick. That's 90% effective and legit. This COVID thing is real, and it will find you. It's killing out people, let me remind you. Back in the days, back in the days, there was polio, smallpox, back in the days. Measles and mumps, man, back in the days. Because of the vaccines, none of those days. Vaccines, they work to trigger immunity. Two shots, we got antibody security. We gotta act now, no need to wait. Get the vaccine before it's too late, for real. All right, let's move on to the list, shall we? Oh, <laughs> still in the same fucking thing. <laughs> okay, Citizen Ryan, thank you so much for subbing for five months. How y'all doing tonight, Habibis? I just wanted to ease in with some nice, calming, soothe music, simply because my internet is on Wi-Fi and I am unable um, to really test the boundaries of my stream because I'm in a place without a hardwired connection because I'm homeless right now. A uh, couple quick notes. We got a brand new Habibi Power Hour this week. We actually have two episodes. We might, we definitely have one guest, but there's a potential we might have two guests, which is quite exciting. I'm very excited for it. Right now my Wi-Fi is on not a hardwire connection. Um, Valley Guy, thank you so much for subbing for eight months. Wow. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate that. Uh, Rom says, just report you for violating Twitch's uh, terms of service. Thank you. Looks like we're at a hype chain going on. We're at level three. Thank you so much, guys. Daniel Collins gifting five tier one subs. Habib, appreciate you. Um, let's see. You honestly love the vaccine song, don't you? You love it. You just, you love it so much. Um, so in the interest of trying to get you guys in and out in about an hour, let's just go ahead and, and pull up our uh, top 10. Okay, starting off with number 10. We got Mary Ann Struther. Now, I'm going to need the Habibis to um, potentially hit me with some intel because i can honestly not tell if this account is a troll or not bart the tree guy thank you so much for the how many tier how many subs jeez five tier one subs thank you so much dr sluice thank you for gifting a tier one sub as well giving you a total of 13 uh for the for the channel and bart the tree guy gives has a total of 17 for the channel Daniel, on the other hand, how many does he have? He's gifting a shit ton. 
He's at 45 for the channel. Holy shit. Um, man. That's that's wild. DMC and the chipmunks are out. I just read your message. Sorry. I'm like hopping between all these different things. Let me go ahead and give you guys the link to uh, the Google Doc. You guys could check it out for yourselves and uh, see what the list is giving you this week. As always, Habibis, um, obviously really appreciate your support. Uh, this last week was crazy for me. I actually I actually traveled out west. I don't like to tell people where I am when I'm when I'm like traveling, but I was out west. And uh, you'll see tonight, uh, Jay and I actually met up, which was fun. We didn't get a chance to do any recording, but we got a chance to hang out. He finally met my wife. Can you believe it? So uh, it was a fun time. And uh, yeah, it was laid back. It was, it was cool. Um, it was chill. Uh, Tonic Playgirl, thank you so much for the five bits. Appreciate you. Um, I'm going to post, uh, if you're on my locals, uh, you probably already saw the photos, but I will post the photos on Instagram and probably Twitter later. Uh, I'm not in California anymore. Uh, I'm back in Florida. Took a red eye last night and I am feeling it. Anyways, we got this tweet over here by Mary Ann Struther, uh, who tweets out, and I honestly cannot tell if this is a troll or not, so please, <laughs> Anthony says, go get the fuck out of here. Um, thank you, Fuzzy. Appreciate it. Uh, Mary says, Mary tweets out, streets are painted black because of racism. It is so that black people must internalize being driven on and stepped on. Streets should be painted white for scientific and safety reasons, but racism doesn't allow for that. Remember that next time you look down and see a street. Just amazing. Happer Prime says, take your shirt off. Thank you for subbing for six months. Oh my God. Damon, if that's the case, I am going to go ahead and uh, take this account off and fire Ben. We're going to fire Ben and sack sacks and take out, put a different number 10 there. Um, I might put Katie Hill there. Let's see what else we got. Hmm. Give me a second. Um, yeah, we'll put Katie Hill there. Yeah, I don't think the street tweet was real, so we're going to go ahead and... <sighs> Katie Hill gets that spot for now until we vote on it, but that's where I put the projection at. Um... Let's see here. Uh, let's keep it going. At number nine, we got The Economist tweeting out, the most striking aspect of Italy's 26-man squad before it took to the pitch was that, alone among the main contenders, it did not include a single player considered as being of color. Guys, look. Um... There's not a, I also have to point out there's not a single Muslim. There's not a single Muslim on this squad, on the Italian squad. How dare they? Jordan Lethal says, I had it muted and didn't realize and thought to myself, this might be the best content Suraj has ever created. Jesus Christ. Is there a time when the Habibis don't dunk on me? Wow, we got to hype level four. Complete. Now we're on level five. Holy shit. What happened? What did I miss? Thank you for extending your tier one sub, Dr. Sluice, through October. That's amazing. Appreciate it. Um, also, Emu Bark, everyone. Emu Bark, Habibis, all of you are celebrating. Um, Zinedine Zidane was a Frenchman. Just FYI, he wasn't on the Italian squad. I know that's what you're trying to point out. Yes, cool, 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 Cal fan. Yes, no, no Irishman on the Italian squad. What the fuck? 
man. What a time to be alive, right? Anyways, uh, yeah, definitely worthy of consideration. Coming in at number eight, we got the Associated Press tweeting out Democratic lawmakers who fled Texas to block a restrictive voting bill are living a life of scrutiny, stress, and secrecy. The state legislators find themselves balancing a punishing schedule and other obligations all under a national spotlight. Uh, not to mention the fact that uh, five of them now have COVID. Um, it's... I don't know. I don't know if that number has been updated. Uh, I, I, um, my God, Habibis, y'all are wild. Gift in so many. We've completed level five. Oh, now it's just over a hundred percent. Thank you for gifting five tier one subs, Stephanie. Giving you a total of sixteen for the channel. Appreciate you, Habibti. Thank you so much. I have to be a little bit quiet tonight just because I'm in an echoey house and I, I live with my own kind. That's right, a bunch of boomers. Um, so it's, uh, it's a time, it's, it's, I am gonna be flying back to DC this week. So I will, I'm so excited. I'm gonna see Ernie uh, because I haven't seen him in almost a month now. Uh, and we're going to finally have Ernie on the show and he's going to be sitting in my lap the entire time we do a BB power hour. I'm so excited. Uh, Bart, the tree guy says Siraj lives with his mom. <laughs> hey, you know, it's, it's not uncommon to live with parents. Uh, so not uncommon. Uh, and in my culture specifically, it is actually encouraged that, um, young people, there are they're actually far more multi generational households than, um, you know, American society probably acknowledges or recognizes. Anyways, coming in at number seven, we got the Lincoln Project. Lincoln Project tweets out an attack on the U.S. Capitol is an act of terrorism, whether the attackers are foreign or domestic. Let's just watch this video. It was an attack on the American Capitol, an assault on the temple of our democracy. You guys can hear this, right? A plot to destroy us all. The attackers followed a sick and corrupted ideology promoted by a charismatic leader. Obsessed with grievances and wild conspiracies. Driven by fear. Willing to take innocent lives for their leader. On that day, our capital was saved from destruction only by the bravery of a handful of Americans with nothing in common but their love for this nation. Ah, uh, yes, the invoking And their willingness to answer the call to courage. That day was the terrorist attack of September 11th, 2001. Al-Qaeda's attack on the Capitol was thwarted only by brave Americans willing to die to protect us all. There have only been two large-scale terrorist attacks planned against the U.S. Capitol. January 6th, was ordered by an American president. Where do you stand? With the terrorists or America? <laughs> what the fuck? This is some heavy George W. Bush shit right here. What the fuck, guys? Okay. You, I mean, like, I don't have to, like, I don't have to break this down for you, but you already know that the January 6th siege on the Capitol was not ordered by an American president. It was, he, there are plenty of clips that say, of him saying, go protest peacefully and make your voice heard on the Capitol. There is no, I, I mean, like there is, if you want to make criticisms about Trump on the day, it would be that he didn't do enough to pull his own people back after they broke into the Capitol. But to say that this is a planned orchestrated attack on the level of, you know, the 9-11 terrorist attacks, it's just, it's just, hold on. 
that that it's that level of like fucking just shoot me. I hate this. I hate this fucking garbage so much. It drives me insane. Also, Lincoln Project got a blue check. Did I miss that? Did I miss that they got verified? I think I missed it. But let me let me bookmark because I'm like I feel my blood pressure rising and I'm going to fucking choke a bitch. Old <laughs> old Ricky bitch tits Wilson. Just <sighs> Loco Comichael. Thank you so much for subbing. Um Just, yeah, at this point, they're basically certified Democratic operatives. There's just no, there's no difference between them and the DNC or uh, Center for American Progress. All right, moving on. What was that, number seven? All right, coming in at number six, we got Benjamin Norton, who tweets out, this is another huge rally in Cuba in support of the socialist government revolution. It is significantly larger than the small right-wing protests. This march, of course, won't get acknowledged by the corporate media. I've never seen someone simp so much for communist dictatorships than Benjamin Norton. It's at this point, it's pathetic. It's honestly pathetic. Like he wants people to simp for communist regimes. Fuzzy says, uh, is Siraj, if I organize an event of Fuzzy and a little ass-eating Muppet Ahmed, <laughs> I-E-J, in three rounds of hand-to-hand -hand combat, would you stream it live on Twitch? All merch sales will be donated to Habibi Rose. Of course. Of course I would. Yeah, and there's Janak with his, your boots, sir. It's good. Uh, let's make sure I bookmark this. I probably already did. It looks like I did. Did I already list it, though? I don't know if I listed it. It's okay. I mean, who put who put these people up to this? What's what's probably what's missing from this is that there there's no such thing as like political dissidents in Cuba. You become a your political dissident in Cuba, you get thrown in fucking jail. You get thrown in prison. So it's not. It's not unheard of or uncommon in places like Cuba or North Korea to basically say, you're going to uh, take to the streets in support of our government or you're going to fucking prison. Ah, oh, Jesus. Um, BP, thank you so much for subbing for three, I'm sorry, for five months, currently on a five month streak. At the tier three, look at you. Uh, man. Anyways, this sucks ass. It sucks ass, Ben. If he were my employee, I'd fire him immediately. But unfortunately, he's not my Ben. So what are you going to do? Coming in at number five, we got CNN Politics tweeting out, say goodbye to your carefree COVID summer. Obviously, they're trying to focus on and scare the masses that the Delta variant is going to come and get you. You know, even if you're vaccinated, the Delta variant is going to, you know, basically kill your father and you know, the rest of your family, maybe ri <laughs> rob you at the same time at gunpoint. It's just fucking garbage, man. I don't know why this is all, it's all a distraction, guys. It's all you need to know. It's a distraction. It's a distraction from what's really going on. Stephanie, thank you so much for gifting five tier one subs to the, the channel. Give me a total of 21. Appreciate you, Habibi. They call it anal assist. Anal isis. Coming in at number four, we got Boots Riley. Zebo Jojo says, what do you mean what's really going on? Well, we got massive inflation. 
skyrocketing uh, prices on everything, gas, groceries, you name it. Um, our economy is going to shit. Stock market's tanking. Uh, joblessness is still high. And they're acting like they're creating a bunch of jobs. We have a president who doesn't have a functioning brain. Uh, a vice president is probably trying to kick him down the stairs. And, um, oh, I don't know. Maybe the fact that, like, everybody is uh, trying to um, act like things are okay when they're really not. Facebook is literally killing people, as Jordan Lethal said. So, anyways, Boots Rally coming at number four says, I'm going to simply destroy the lie that there are no elections in Cuba. This first picture is from the 2008 Cuban elections. As you see, there are multiple candidates for each particular office. At least three or four are Afro-Cuban. Wow. Who would have known that Boots Rally is a Boots liquor? This picture is from the 2019 Cuban election in which the Cuban people ratified the new constitution, which the National Assembly voted in, put together, and voted in. They voted in the new constitution 8 to 1, mandatory voting for all above the age of 16. Everybody voted. When I've pointed out that there are elections in Cuba, people have come with the lie that, yeah, but there is only one candidate. Not true. As seen in the first pick above, as for voting, this from Encyclopedia Britannica. Let's look at that. Uh, hold on. Let's keep it going. <coughs> Many of you will find this hard to believe because we've been lied to by people we either trust or that claim authenticity of some sort. Some of them are knowingly lying to you, and some are ignorant, repeating lies that have been told to them for decades. <coughs> Sorry. If Cuban voting is a shocker to you, question everything you've heard of uh, heard about Cuba, including the folks on here claiming authority or firsthand knowledge on the subject who have told you there is no vote. And then he gets to the best part. Yes, it's a one-party system, but that doesn't mean... But what does that mean? It pans out to meaning it's basically a no-party system. People run as individuals. Here, major corporations give to, give to both parties to make sure that whoever is in the office sticks to their party line and doesn't go against them. Literally, a contradiction within a contradiction. It's like the inception level of contradictions. Boots Rally continues on saying there are small protests around 1,500 people happening in Cuba as there would slash should be in any democracy. Oh, it's a democracy now. The repression of these protests has been far, far less than U.S. protests. Many pics you saw of big protests were actually in support of the government like this, one million Cubans. <laughs> Jesus. Continuing on, Boots Rally says there have always been protests a lot in Cuba and no, everyone wasn't jailed. <laughs> they have been smaller than the recent ones, like this one from 2010, where the Western media and the coverage they got far outweighed the number of protesters. And then he continues on saying, that being said, uh, there have also been people who have been found to, uh, ad and once back in the U.S., admitted to working with USAID and CIA. When they get found out, they get jailed. They're, these are numerous instances. Oh, man, it just keeps going and going. I don't want to read this whole fucking thing. God damn. Um, so, yeah, Boots Rally, definitely a Cuban dictator, uh, communist op. What a fucking dumbass. Uh, coming in at number three, we've got Zach Ford who tweeted, Ben Shapiro is how Facebook is killing people. Deleted. And, of course, he blocked me. And then locked his account. Amazing. What was that? Number three? All right. Coming in at number two, we got Reuters. Reuters tweeting out Cuban protest risks exacerbating COVID-19 spike. Oh, now we care about COVID. We suddenly care about COVID and people. Um, we suddenly care about COVID and protesting. But we didn't care about it last summer. Who gives a shit, right? Um... Dan says this thread is longer than Siraj's marriage, which, oof, tough scene, but yes. <laughs> Iron Lung, 237 says not everything is bad, at least the southern border is under control. Uh, 
uh, Michael asks, are you going to subscribe to CNN Plus or else? Why would I waste my money? You're all wasting your money on me. <laughs> Why would I then turn around and waste that money on CNN? Anyways, coming in at number one, uh, we have Gene Wu. Again, Gene Wu was number one last week. He could go back to back in number one, and he could go back to back weeks at number one. If that's if that's possible, um, I haven't had a back to back number one in quite some time. So this could be huge. But this man, literally, yeah, Ben Wamball says this man has literally been on fire. And we're going to go through his tweets, all right? So the very first offense, he has COVID. Del uh, actually, no, let's go to the very first one. He says, hey, Fox News, if you can't find any news to report on tomorrow, I had chicken Caesar salad for dinner as well. You're welcome. Okay, that was in reference to his first meal as a fugitive. Uh, then follow up, uh, breaking news, Fox News, Democrats breakfast only includes fruit, yogurt, and coffee. No steak, no whiskey. What a wuss. You should pay me. Being a Fox News reporter is easy as falling off the back of a pickup truck. That'd be great. Uh, great new job for you, Gene, since you don't do your own fucking job. Coming in, uh, his next offense. Uh, Briscoe Kane tweets out, not going to use that Texas alleged paycheck you're still getting for not showing up to work. And I think, ah, yes. Um, Gene Wu then tweets out, if someone sucked at being a committee chairman so badly that the speaker has to create a completely new committee out of thin air just to avoid the bill coming through the same committees again, the chairman should return all their Texas paychecks. And then he continues on. Let's see, do I have it done here? Uh, Briscoe, you know my Twitter rule about other House members. You don't mess with me. I don't mess with you. Don't cry about it later. And then Jean Wu says, holy shit, did you ask OAN to make you look like a serial killer? So apparently Briscoe Kane has um, autism. Is that right? Anyways, um, Jean Wu just keeps tweeting. And then he tweets out COVID-19 Delta variant is spreading fast. We are prepared for ma masking and distancing mandates and guidelines. I hope you are too. And then he goes on to say, I assume that everyone whistling past the graveyard and laughing about Democratic members testing positive have already been fully vaccinated and have no complaints about mandatory masking provisions again. Otherwise, it seems kind of like begging karma to visit. And then he says, being fully vaccinated would at least make the symptoms mild and not likely fatal. And then follows it up by saying, thank you for all the comments concerning masking. I look for, I'll forward your request to Congress and the White House to ask that we reinstitute a national masking requirement. I appreciate and welcome the vocal support for such a mandate. Fuck that. Straight up, fuck that. I am not, you know. Um, first of all, I think the way we could do this is real quick. We could literally do a, oh shit, why am I out of focus now? Palmer report. Let's see this. Uh, I'm blocked. Now I'm in focus. Um, let's see if we can pull it up again. Palmer Report tweets out, place unvaccinated people under house arrest until the pandemic is over. If they don't like it, they can get vaccinated. Problem solved. Yeah, I think that deserves to be less than. Um, but I want to actually do an up-down vote on Gene Wu, if he should get number one again. That would save us a lot of time. So I'm going to do a, a one-minute poll. Gene Wu, number one. Yes, no. I'm going to make this one minute long. You can use your channel points. Poll begins right now. <sighs> if you think he shouldn't be number one, make your voice heard. And it's looking like everybody wants him to be number one. What was the list? What was the last back to back number one? Shit, I gotta go find out. Let's go. Um, Let's go to my uh, profile. Blake, did I see Eliza dunk on me? No, because I've been fucking streaming the fucking list.
All right, there we go. Gene Wu gets number one. Congratulations, Gene Wu, you fucking idiot. trying to see when the last time I had a back-to-back -back number one. It's been a minute. Sorry, it's literally quick clicking through all of them. Oh, look here, Suraj Hashmi. <laughs> we got CNN, The Root, Laverne Spicer, that's not my mom. That's probably my wife. Uh, Zebo Jojo. Did you see my sub? I don't know if I did. Let's go find it. I apologize if I didn't see it. I'm trying to do too many things at once. Oh, you subbed at 9.46 p.m. Sorry I missed that, Habibi. Thank you so much for subbing. I appreciate it. I don't have, I'm using OBS and not StreamYards because of my limited uh, Wi-Fi connection. Um, and OBS has, puts a less, less of a strain on my computer. So there, I, can, I don't get notified when anyone subs. I have to like, I have my phone pulled up here in front of me, like right here, just to make sure I'm following along with the, uh, uh, the subs and those notifications, so. Javi, thank you so much for the 69 bits. I appreciate it. Can we start over again? No. But I will send you guys the... Uh, um, I'll send you the link again for the Google chat. I'm sorry, not Google chat. The, um, uh, the um, Google Doc. Sorry. I'm an idiot. Um, but uh, Gene Wu got number one. That's all I need to know. Uh, let's keep it, let's keep looking. We're going back into 2020 when the last time we had a back-to-back -back number one. <laughs> Jim Rubin, that was a fun list. Um, hmm. Shit, we're, it's been over a year since we've had a back-to-back. -back. Number one. Ice Cube went from four to one. Yeah, Donald Trump, May 31st, May 25th, and May 17th. We had a, he had a triple back-to-back. -back. He had back-to-back-to-back. -to -back -to -back. May 17th, May 25th, May 31st. And then he dropped down to number nine. So yeah, on June 9th. So there you have it. That was the last time Donald, that was the last time we had a back to back number one. So congratulations to Gene Wu making it happen. Congratulations, Gene Wu making it happen. We finally have our first back to back number one in over a year. Not many happen. It hasn't happened to many people, 
But thank God we got him. Thank you, Gene Wu. Bless up. Um, all right, let's go ahead and vote on number two. We got Reuters. We got Reuters for their COVID scare on the Cuban protests. We got Zach. Oh, sorry, not that one. Not not Zach Ford blocking me, but Zach Ford saying that Ben Shapiro is killing people. Uh, we got Boots Riley for his. Oh, but Cuba has elections. Cuba people, Cubans vote. Uh, then we have. I'm gonna move things around. I'm gonna put Benjamin Norton in the conversation. And then finally, I'm gonna put the Lincoln Project in this. This one's gonna be a little bit longer. I'll make this three minutes long. Um, and you guys can check, you guys can ask questions if you need to view any other tweets. Um, so I'll go ahead and get those votes in. Now, if obviously, if we need to um, get the wait, hold on one second. Is my mic? I don't have any noise removal. Fuck me. That's probably why you hear everyone. All right, how am I? How do I sound now? Do I sound better? More informed, maybe? I'm turning up the gain on here. If I went quieter. Hey, Dan from last night. Is there a, run, a Nightbot command for the running list Google Doc? Um, you know, there isn't because it has to be. It, it has to be what's it called um it's a new document every week so making a nightbot command for it is kind of tough unless we like got uh, unless we created a special google doc that is always the same link um that we literally just copy paste to whatever's this week which can be done and i could probably make ben do it um and i probably will make ben do it just so we have that nightbot command um Dan, Javi <laughs> says, "Who is your favorite sexy celebrity? Why is it Jen Rubin?" <laughs> uh, Barton Chiga says, "I feel like I can hear your raw, unfiltered opinions now. That's true, but I could get taken down by Twitch at any point." Uh, Dan says, "Is the most recent is the most recent thing you tweeted what?" What? What? I don't know. There's a lot of dunking on me. All right, let's see what the dunk is. Um. Oh, I get asked out sometimes, but I'm terrified that I'll end up with a man like Siraj Hashri, so I'm really picky. Honestly, dunk away. I don't give. At this point, just keep dunking. Don't stop. The more you dunk. The more, like, once you stop dunking, that's when I'll ask, like, what's wrong? You guys okay? That's that's kind of where we're leaving it. That's kind of where we're at. <laughs> Siraj gave me his king uh, cave internet. I thought you said I gave you uh, my king internet. If you tweet out the link, use the Sharia command to bring up your latest tweet. Um, be like a donut and dunk. The more we dunk, the more money Siraj makes. <laughs> All right, looks like the Lincoln Project is going to get it at number two. Uh, what's the 18.5? This is all fucking weird. I don't like this. Come the fuck on. There we go. Lincoln Project gets it. Uh, Rich Pete's uh, contributes 552 channel points and 52 bits. All right. Coming up next, we got... Where is Lincoln Project? So Lincoln Project went up to from 7 to 2. So congratulations. Um, let's do number three next.
I I know well I'm I'm a moonkin. I'm trying to save the quality of the stream by streaming on OBS because I like I'm taking out all the bells and whistles of my stream so that you guys can at least get a clean stream because I am on Wi-Fi in a house that's not my own. So um A new Twitter handle is tweeting out dumb shit. Hell yeah, let's go. Uh, you share a lot of excuses. Fine. <laughs> uh, all right, coming in at number, let's uh, do number three. We got Reuters. Let's add Palmer report to that. Um, let me just switch to Habibi Bros so y'all can see it. Um... Palmer Report tweets out, place some vaccinated people under house arrest until the pandemic is over. If they don't like it, they can get vaccinated. Problem solved. That's kind of deranged and authoritarian. I don't know. But you do you. Next up, we got Zach Ford, also under consideration, saying that uh, Ben Shapiro is, is how Facebook is killing people. Um, then we have Benjamin Norton. with his simping for the communist uh, Cuban dictatorship. And then we also have Boots Riley, who is also simping for communist uh, dictatorship. We're going to make this two minutes and have that poll go right now. It's for number three. Zebo Jojo says, did you see Brian Stelter doing reliable sources with Michael Flynn? I think it was Michael Wolf. <laughs> Michael says, keep it democracy stretch, get it right. Janice says, so much cringe. You know, Dan, I'm not entirely sure if his name is Boots, but um, it's it's it looks like it's Boots. Let's see if that's an actual name. That is an actual name. It's got to be a stage name. That guy looks familiar. I feel like I've seen him before. Okay, so he made the movie Sorry to bar Bother You. Which I haven't seen, but it looked kind of interesting. Anyways, I don't know why he decided to. Interesting move on Boots Rally part. Currently, we have Palmer Report in the lead. Let's go and look at it right now. Let's make sure we add this tweet too. July 19th, that's today. Also, shout out to my uh, little sister, Anissa. It's her, it's her uh, birthday today. She is now, I think, fuck, she's 32. My God. I'm 33. She's she's like a little less than two years younger than me. Uh, she's currently in medical school. She took her, board, her step one boards. And I think she's about to take her step two every now. Uh, in like, I think September. Palmer Report gets it with 64% of the vote. All right. Uh, here we go. Problem solved right here. Palmer Report gets it number three. go actually what's really funny is um my sister and i basically traded places uh she wanted to do journalism and i wanted to do medicine and then she decided she wanted to not disappoint my parents and that i did so basically that's where that's what happened so she's good people though she is the she is the um the family leftist, though. 
just FYI. But she gets it. She understands how fucked up everything is. And she's not like, um, she is, what's the best way of saying it? Far more with it than a lot of leftists. And we're taking Mary out of here. We don't need her. Um, let's see. Katie Hill, I need to actually get up here on the, so you guys can see her tweet. Um, that's the Katie Hill tweet says, I know too many people, too many vaccinated people have gotten the Delta variant. Bring back your mask, folks. Masks don't fucking work. Iron Lung says, Roger, we're making excellent gynecologist. <sighs> Let me make it clear. My entire family is a family of libs, but my sister is the leftist. Okay. So my family are my family are just a bunch of neo libs. I am the only one in my family who just doesn't go with the flow. And obviously that's quite evident. <laughs> uh let's vote on number four we got reuters uh tweeting out keeping protests risk exacerbating covid19 spike then we have zach ford saying ben shapiro is killing people or ben shapiro is how facebook is killing people and then we have boots rally with his oh cubans can vote Sh bullshit thread and we have benjamin norton With his Cubans are actually allowed to protest in support of the government. I'm going to add uh, CNN politics to this one. CNN politics tweeting out, uh, say goodbye to your carefree COVID summer. Go fuck yourself. This is going to be two minutes again. Poll begins right now. Uh, Demetria, yes, they do stand Nancy Pelosi. Um, they basically think I'm a Trump supporter simply because I dunk on all of their heroes. Um, so you can see how the family dynamic is just based on that. CNN politics taking the lead right now. Um, yeah. Vote butts. Vote bitch tits Riley. What did they say about the Pelosi ice cream incident? I don't know. I don't ask them. The reason I don't ask them, I don't like talking politics with my family because it always leads to tension. So... I talk to them about other stuff. Parents just don't understand me. Um, so if Boots Riley gets it and not CNN, bitch tits Riley. Currently in the lead with 53% of the vote. Are we going to have a runoff? Are we? Yeah, we're right now in runoff territory. 50% versus 46. That's not. Oh, now we're at 51. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. And Boots Rally gets it with 51% of the vote. Bitch Tits Rally, congratulations. Bitch Tits Rally. Oh, 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> Slip up. All right. So let's see. Boots Riley, uh, originally projected at number four, gets number four. Dan from last night contributes 2,484 channel points. Josh and contributes 37 bits. I said, bitch. All right. Moving on. Let's go on to number five. Number five, you guys. Zach Ford. We got... Reuters. We got CNN politics. We got Benjamin Norton. And then we got the Associated Press. The Associated Press tweeting out Democratic lawmakers who fled Texas to block a restrictive voting bill are living a life of scrutiny, stress, and secrecy. The state legislators find themselves balancing a punishing schedule and other obligations, all under a national spotlight. Two minutes on the clock begins right now. Uh... See how it goes. Reuters currently taking... Ah, CNN Politics getting it. Getting an early lead from CNN Politics. Reuters making a quick comeback. And now Reuters is in the lead. And wow, it's really a neck and neck between now CNN Politics back in the lead. And now it's tied. And now Reuters. And now it's tied again. Oh, we might actually get a um, might get a runoff here, but it's looking like Reuters is uh, getting that uh, currently pulling away. Man, Reuters. Still in the lead. Dan's getting wrecked right now. RIP Dan. Is CNN Politics making a comeback? It's really tight. It looks like we actually might get a runoff. <laughs> Michael says CNN Politics post kill, uh, kills more people than Facebook dead serious. I mean, he did say dead in his, his comment, so... It's just, oh shit. Oh my God, it's so close. Oh my God. It's so close. It's so close. It could be 50-50. It's 49-49. Oh shit. Wow, we got runoff time. CNN Politics, 50. Reuters, 49. Let's go ahead, runoff time. All right, it's gonna be one uh, one minute. So we got CNN politics tweeting out, "Say goodbye to your carefree COVID summer." Anal ISIS, followed by Reuters tweeting out, "Cuban protests risk exacerbating COVID nineteen spike." Paho, Pennsylvania ho. Runoff for number five. Now, remember, whoever doesn't win this gets number six, all right? So let's go ahead and start that poll. Wow, Reuters really jumping to an early lead. Holy shit. Reuters is destroying CNN right now destroying and Dan is going to be crying his eyes out
I always leave channel points on for the runoff. Look at that, CNN's making a comeback. Can they get it in time? Yeah, it looks like Reuters gets it with 55% of the vote. Rach Pete's contributing 159 bits. Daniel Collins contributing 759 channel points, which means CNN politics gets number six. God, we can't type. That's how boomer I am. All right. So seen in politics and Reuters, congratulations. Next up, we got number seven. We got Zach Ford. We got Benjamin Norton, Ben Norton. We got the AP, Associated Press. We got The Economist tweeting out the most striking aspect of Italy's 26-man squad before it took the to the pitch was that alone among the main contenders, it did not include a single player considered as being of color. And then finally, we have Katie Hill. I know too many, P I know too many vaccinated people have gotten the, the Delta variant. Bring back your mask, folks. All right, we're going to make this two minutes long. Poll begins right now. Let's see what we got here. Which one was Zach Ford? This one was Zach Ford. No, not that one. This one. Looks like we got a real smorgasbord. We got... Oh, Zach Ford currently in the lead. Got 50% of the vote. Now 52 currently has the majority. Uh, damn, what's the command for my last tweet again? It was in like uh, exclamation point Sharia. 69 votes. Let's go. Um, my last tweets are always lame. I should probably update it. Especially when I stream. Oh. Oh, hamburgers. My last tweet. My like my previous tweets so every time I'm streaming. All right, Zach Ford gets it at number seven with fifty six percent of the vote. Congratulations, Zach Ford. Oh god damn it, Siraj. All right. We only have uh three spots left and four candidates. All of my tweets, that's right. So number eight, we got Ben Norton. We got AP. We got Economist. And K. 
video. I'm going to make this one minute long. And y'all can just deal with it. Paul begins right now. Daniel says my last tweet was pretty good. It better be the fucking... It better be what I think it is. Please. Yes. You got the vaccine. You got the vaccine, they got the vaccine, we got the vaccine We can get back to normal, let me inform you, let's all get the vaccine It's about community immunity, I'm talking unity for you and me If Doc says it's good, then trust me, it's good, now let's all get the vaccine There is none higher, DMC, I will inspire Time for us to trust and not debate The vaccine, believe it's safe to take Nine out of ten people won't get sick That's ninety percent effective and legit This COVID thing is real and it will find you It's killing our people, let me remind you Back in the days, back in it. the days There was polio, smallpox, back in the days Measles and mumps, man, back in the days But because of the vaccines, none of those days Vaccines, they work to trigger immunity Two shots, we got antibody security We gotta act now, no need to wait Get the vaccine before it's too late, for real it just keeps repeating itself. I love it. All right, so Ben Norton gets it at number eight with this. The Associated Press. Next up, number nine, we got the Associated Press. Uh, we got The Economist. And we have Katie Hill. Let's go ahead and start that poll right now. One minute on the clock. Get started. Rage Peace says, did you consider this for the list? Mm. I don't know. This like this is like very much within the wheelhouse of Ben and Jerry's. Like they are leftist, and I fully expect them to do this. Um, so I don't think it's dunk worthy, yes. List worthy, probably not. Get back to Katie Hill. She's now currently in the lead with 71% of the vote. <laughs> ZD, Zachary says, I actually like this now. Fuck you, Siraj. <laughs> Katie Hill gets it with 72% of the vote. That's uh, 69 plus. That's nice plus three. All right. So final spot is going to be between the Associated Press and the Economist. The Associated Press once more tweets out uh, Democratic lawmakers who fled Texas to block a restrictive voting bill are living a life of scrutiny, stress, and secrecy. The state legislators find themselves balancing a punishing schedule and other obligations all under a national spotlight. Um, and then the Economist tweets out the most striking aspect of Italy's 26-man squad before it took to the pitch was that alone among the main contenders, it did not include a single cons uh, player considered as being of color. All right. One minute begins right now. Also, I don't know what happened here. I thought I was following Ben. Did I... Oh, I am following him. Uh, oh, well. Tough shit. All right. Oh. Fire Ben. Oh shit, Economist, holy shit. Economist storms past the AP right now. Look at that.
Amazing. Eric Soderstrom contributes 35 bits and Fuzzy Dunlop contributes, contributes 138 channel points. Thank you to you both. The Economist gets it at number 10. All right. So there you have it. Gene Wu gets it back to back weeks, weeks at number one, followed by the Lincoln Project at number two, the, the Palmer Report at three, Boot, Bitch Tits Riley at number four, Reuters at number five, CNN Politics at six, Go Fuck Yourself Dan, uh, Zach Ford at seven, Ben Norton at eight, Katie Hill at nine, The Economist at 10. There you have it. And before I let you go, before I let you go, Let's get it. Let's let's do full. Speed. We'll find you. It's killing our people. Start over. I got the vaccine. You got the vaccine. They got the vaccine. We got the vaccine. We can get back to normal. Let me inform you. Let's all get the vaccine. It's about community immunity. I'm talking unity for you and me. If Doc says it's good, then trust me, it's good. Now let's all get the vaccine. I'm the king of rock. There is none higher. DMC, I will inspire. Time for us to trust and not debate. The vaccine, believe it's safe to take. Nine out of ten people won't get sick. That's 90% effective and legit. This COVID thing is real, and it will find you. It's killing our people. Let me remind you. Back in the days, back in the days, there was polio, smallpox. Back in the days, measles and mumps. Man, back in the day, but because of the vaccines, none of those days. Vaccines, they work to trigger immunity. Two shots, we got antibody security. We gotta act now. No need to wait. Get your vaccine before it's too late. For real. I got the vaccine. I was just going to say that uh, I'll be streaming more later this week because I'll be back in D.C. And I'll actually be, I'll actually have a good connection with uh, my internet, which I'm very excited about. Um, and you guys can get a chance to recoup your uh, channel points. So hopefully that'll be good. Uh, I know you boomers couldn't hear me. Uh, that's because you're all boomers and you're losing your hearing. Um, as always, Avivis, thank you so much for your support. I appreciate all of you. Don't forget to um, tune in for Avivi Power Hour this week. We got at least two episodes. Um, very excited about those. And uh, let's see what else. If you haven't already, check out the locals. Um, check out the YouTube. Sub to the YouTube. Um, why am I doing locals? Well, I just want to give you my raw, unfiltered thoughts. You can't really get anywhere else on the internet. And also talk about uh, uh, Jay uh, being the son to Dan from last night. Um, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, see, Dan, I always have something for you. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, as always, Habibis, uh, y'all the best. I love you all. Thank you so much for your uh, constant dunking, your love and support. It hasn't been a great time for me, but that's because, you know, I love the transition uh, to a new place and a uh, new part of the country. And obviously, uh, a diving into a uncharted water. So I appreciate all of your uh, support in every which way. Emotional, um, sexual, physical. Um, the sexual is really for Jay. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, every every way I, I appreciate it anyways Habibis, love y'all hope you have a good night um, I will see you guys at the very least at the earliest probably on Wednesday for Habibi Power Hour at 9pm East 6pm Pacific on YouTube go check that out love y'all have a good night peace it Masalama.